Welcome back to Hope TV where you look and live. My name is Sharon Aitore and today on Testify, I host Joseph, aka Countryman, with quite an inspiring story. Your life will never be the same again after this episode of Testify. Welcome back, uh, Joseph. Thank you. So we left it at uh, Yuri Nakuru. You've been expelled from school. And uh, so what happens next? Did you finally complete Form 4? Yes, I, I completed Form 4. After now, my uncle and my grandmother attacked me when I was in Akuru there. We were with them going to secondary, my secondary school to find out if they had paid. But instead, they turned against me and they attacked me. And all the Makangas and everybody's on me, yeah, beated me up. So like now, there are other guys who knew me and they, they, they came running and said, how's him wheezy, how's him wheezy? So, and then we, I woke up and now we started fighting now the, the uncle. So to come to a meno, not to come to a macho moja. Oh. So I was charged with grievous harm. Na kundlo courts. And our wish I came and, and gave a bond of 100,000, the surety of the same amount. And I was released there. Well, we, were, we were three with the sons. So, and I went to, to his house. I was living there in Nakuru. To whose house now? Now the well wisher. Okay. The well wisher. And, and uh, they helped me to find another school. Another school. And you know, when you are an orphan, even where you are, uh, sometimes you become a tool. You become a tool. They will use you. So it was even, it was not, it was not a comfortable life that I was, where I was living. So I went to Afra High School, mm -hmm. where I started doing well in second term. Uh, no, in, in uh, second, uh, second uh, uh, grade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from two, I was doing good, uh, but uh, but only when I got in. But uh, after form four, uh, for form three, uh, uh, when I was in form three, Casey, Casey, Ika, Ika Katwa, mm -hmm. Casey was withdrawn, and I was now to be to be free. Eh? So after one year, took a Casey, and that that is the time now we, me and my all the family members when you were in Evo, we kept apart. Mm -hmm. Now we decided none, I don't belong to them, they don't belong to me. Kill them to a kokivia. So for me, I continued with the form four in Kamaliza. After Kamaliza, surely after completing now form four, when, uh, when I was in uh, this man's house, Nika Ambiwa, Uskai Rudi Ukutena, don't ever come back here again because I've been in and out of school, you know, uh, suspension, all that, mm -hmm. things, and, and you know, lying about for money, you know, the need for money. Just because I was an addict, just to feed my my my, my problem. Yeah. So and I came to Kawangware. Now Kawangware was now I joined. Well, you came back to I Kawangware came back to Kawangware. Is, okay. And I came here now. It was my 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 the the, the climax of my life. Mm -hmm. It was either grave or, or survive. So I came here and I started mugging people immediately. And mm -hmm. we I joined a group called Matenjo Base. Matenjo Base are the people who don't shave their heads. They, are, they have dreadlocks, and I, I made my dreadlocks also. You will see my pictures, yeah. So, and uh, we started uh, drinking pombe flani ili kuwena ito mkorogo. Mkorogo ni pombe enye ukikunywa usiku wa subuhi unanuka mafi kwa mdomo. I don't know that is the right word to use. Yeah, ili kuwa ivo. So, uh, and then, uh, as you know about drugs and all that, that when you continue using it, the, the, then you don't... Uh, in it was the reproductive life in Akufa, everything you become uh, uh, important. You, things that happening to me mm. for all that time, but I was still in. I was now. I didn't have a house. I actually I was being helped by friends, but later I became an addict. Uh, their parents chased me away, mm. so I was chased away, and I, was, I found now there was nowhere to live. So I was living in the streets now, and I was lies, machao, manini. At this time, I was using pres prescription pills. And then I was drinking changa, I was smoking marijuana, I was taking mira, and I was smoking cigarettes. But I needed them every night, every day, for me to be able to sleep. So now you've joined a group. Yes. Uh, what, what exactly was the main aim of this group? Or what were, they, what were you doing in the, the group? The, the aim of the group would, would mug people. And when we get money, we we'll celebrate uh, by buying this illicit liquor and we enjoy. Yeah, and we know that uh, we, we ourselves, we were like uh, a rebellious group. That we wanted to live our own lives. Eh? Uh, yeah. So that group, the, the aim of the group was to mug people and just to, to be taking drugs with the money that we get. 
So now you're living in the streets. Yes. For how long did you stay in the street? Did you continue on with street life? Yeah, I continued with the street life because I used now to fetch uh, water. When now things got worse, there was shoot to kill. So we, I avoided the group and I started fetching water to people. They were paying me five shillings per jerry can and will get the money and, and drink. But uh, uh, I used to sleep behind where the changa was being sold. So uh, I used to take changa every day and sleep there. So at that time, I was very dirty. I nilikuwa na chawa and all that. And na viatu zangu zilikuwa zinaduka kama nimeva. Yeah, and um, when I was sleeping at that place, there was a guy who came with big stone, a huge stone, na kanipigea kichwa sana. So ni sustain blood and uh, bloodshot eyes and uh, how do you call that? Blood. Yeah. Yes. So for me, I, I realized these people had no mercy. So, so next, why, why did he hit you? Because I was so aggressive in the street. I was so violent, fighting, all those. That was because of the, of the, of the, of the uh, um, rage, bitterness. Yeah. Because my life, my life was just going to the grave. I, I, I feared nothing and, and of course the former life had hardened me so so hard so I, I feared nothing. So everyone, I was an enemy of everyone. So even my friends who claim to be my friends await me, uh, they wait for a, for a chance so that they can they can hit me or, or kill me. But all this while you, you didn't die. Yes, I didn't die. So these people wanted to kill me but they never managed to do it. So for me now I started now wanting to revenge. I realized that these people are not friends, so they were enemies. I wanted to revenge. And now the revenge was, I'll carry a, ma a machete, mm -hmm. a panga, and I will, be, I will be now cutting people instead. So what I did, I did kwa cut mtu kwa maskio. Kila time, I would cut you, maybe here uh, at the ankle, or, or maybe the, the maskio part. Why? Because those are the areas that I know you are not going to, to get healed, even when I go to jail. I come back, you, you won't have one. So that's actually what they think. That is the mentality of, of uh, what I thought. So uh, at that time, I found myself now going to jail because of the grievous harms, which I did. And I will find myself in industrial prison for eight months in remand, the next year, eight months, another four months. So, and, and I thought now, because I had no freedom when I go to jail, and when you go to jail, when no one who comes to see you there, there is a name that they attach, to, uh, they attach you to it, Unaito Losti. Lost is someone who you are unseen, no one who comes there. So uh, instead of you becoming uh, a soft guy or changed person or transformed transform from person in the, in, the, in the jail, you become a hard person. So after coming out of th these three years now, trying to evaluate them, they were all yani, nibure. And now coming back here, coming back here, I didn't have a place to sleep. And everywhere, it were two enemies. So for me, I thought of killing myself. So killing myself was now going and committing suicide. Mm -hmm. So kwa kamba, niki wana kamba mahali on the tree, under the tree, I, I, I saw myself now dying. But before dying, I, I needed to ask myself some questions. And first, first question was, uh, what if I die? Where will I go? Especially uh, uh, in Sunday school. We have been taught when you die, you're going to hell. So I was afraid to go to hell. All those thoughts were in your mind at that yes, time. Yes, yes, yes. And people say that God don't, doesn't speak, speak to people. Uh, God speaks to people. That day he spoke to me, you are going to hell. Yeah, and I feared hell. So and did you I, hear a voice? Did, was it you know, in your mind? Conscious. Conscious. You spoke to me. Yeah. So another question was, uh, do, do people who commit suicide, hang themselves, do they feel pain? Of course, I've seen people and the way they, 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 they look like, uh, yeah, yeah, they actually feel pain. So, and, and then the, that question was, Nadambizangu, my sins, when now I die, uh, when, when, any, when any other person kills me, where will, will my sins go? Will they be transferred to them? So that was what I thought. I thought now, when any other person kills me, my sins will go to them. So and I, the good people will be the police. And there was a police here who used to shoot people. So I went to that police. Instead of him killing me, uh, he, they, 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 they beat me up. So you wanted him to kill you so that the my sins, sins can are... Go. I was so foolish that, yeah, that much. <laughs> okay. Most of the guys were killed. Like 300 of my friends have been killed. Langata imekuatu ni kuzika tuatu from from mob justice to police shoot. Yeah, and of course I didn't tell you, but I had a gun of which I sold it. Those are nikikuwa kwa base bado. Nilikuwa na gun, I sold it. 
is that the time when you were the living time, in the streets? The time I was living in the street. I had it when I was living in the street. It's amazing to find out that 300 of his friends died, but he still survived. What did God have in plan for him? We find out this after this short break. Keep it Hope TV, where you look and live. <laughs>